Hello everyone, today I want to talk about networking strategies and uh, I want to emphasize, you know, the things which I wish I knew on how to network. So let's say you are done with your step one, step two exams, you are ECFMG certified and you are applying for match. And then the next thing you are worried about, hey, what to do uh, about research, how to network people and how to meet right person at the right time. So I'll be talking about networking strategies for 2025. And... Uh, the usual thing about networking is uh, networking is not about meet and greet. Let's say you are going to a meeting and, and, and exchanging your cards and making it transactional. That's not networking. That's not impactful. It's not about saying, hey, uh, can you do this for me? I'll do this uh, for you. It's not about uh, you know just a transactional exchange it's more about making a genuine connection and uh, making it non-transactional and making it mutually benefit rather than just asking for help that hey please recommend me for the residency program so i want to talk about some creative under the radar networking techniques which i used uh, and uh, which i found very helpful in advancing my career and that's how i was able to get into residency and that's how i was able to match it into cardiology we'll talk about those techniques and we'll make sure you learn exactly those networking strategies i'll also talk about some things uh, which you shouldn't be doing and which i think um, which has a better way of doing it like for example first one let's talk about uh, using social media so use social media very very wisely so if you are reaching out someone on social media you should you should make sure you're not reaching out to them on their personal social media platforms like for example it's very inappropriate to message someone on facebook like especially program directors or associate program directors it's okay uh, to send a formal message on linkedin but the best way is always writing an email email is always considered a professional way of communication so the next thing i would say when you are posting something on linkedin i see you know lots of posts on linkedin and most of them 99.99 percent of them has same format do you know why it's because of chat gpt so you know every post in linkedin when someone is posting about research it has the same format that this is an abstract alert publication alert this alert i went to a meeting these are all cliche statement used by chat gpt so it's always always important to make sure you proofread that and make make it in a way that it's it's human written the way i prefer is i write everything uh, by myself first raw and you can always use ai tools to correct grammar so it will not take away your authenticity but if you ask a small prompt to chat gpt it's going to give you a, a a generic response which is posted by everyone so whenever i first see i hope you are doing well or some of the cliche statements uh, which are typical of chat GPT, you'll be able to figure out and whenever I see long emails, they are usually not written by the students or residents or, or person itself, that's chat GPT. So that's, that's the biggest turning uh, off point. So make sure you write genuine and just use AI tools to correct grammar. At least you should have your authenticity. Um, the next thing uh, I would mention is uh, when you find someone on, on LinkedIn, um, so this is how I was able to network. Let's say you find someone on LinkedIn, um, then you go to their program website. Let's say you found a program director, go to their program website and find their email, read about their bio, and then send a personalized email saying that, hey, I saw that you recently uh, published an article. I'm also interested in that. Um, it would be great if we can collaborate on that in future. Okay, so that's the best way uh, to find people in LinkedIn which are relevant to your field. There are also other websites like, for example, I'm a member of ACP, that's American College of Physicians. So there is a member only directory. So if you want to reach out someone who is, um, let's say, the, the vice president or president of certain council, you can find their email in the members directory and then write a personalized email to them. Remember to personalize, personalize, personalize. Do not write chat GPT written emails. That's the biggest turn off point. Okay, next thing, uh, second one is I'll, I'll talk about art of cold emailing. I would, you know, I know cold emailing can 
can be frustrating sometimes because you uh, you may be in a situation where you don't hear anything back and that's the that's the point of cold emailing that you shouldn't be expecting anything back but you never know that what's going to work and that worked for me when applying for residency i emailed uh, program directors and uh, i wrote very very personalized genuine emails to them and i was able to fetch interviews uh, from that specific program and the classic example is me that's how i was able to reach out to my program and then i appeared for interview and i was able to match and the best powerful technique i would say is to compliment and question you have to first compliment them see flattery and asking a curious question is always the best combo so you have to first compliment them compliment them on their achievements compliment them on being a program director compliment them on being um, a top researcher and winning the best award and then ask your question that hey how can we do this forward or can i know more about your program so compliment and question is the best combination for cold emailing okay and if you don't hear back from them it's always uh, it's okay to follow up in in few weeks to few months and if they respond it's also important to show consistency so when you exchange uh, thank you you can always follow up them and show consistency down the line after two three months okay that shows your genuine interest <laughs> Um, number three, I would say going to local meetings or state chapter meetings or publishing in students or resident section. So if you go to websites like Doximity, AMA journals or ACP blog post or ACP journals, they always have in training sections or medical student sections or resident section where you can write your perspective, opinion, editorial, uh, opinion editorial and publish uh, publish that there and also important to again emphasize that it should be your own perspective just not chat gpt's perspective you can always use that to correct grammar okay and one of the other thing is you can go to the state chapters like for example i'm in wisconsin so i usually go to wisconsin american college of physician meetings uh, you can present posters and it's it's important that it's not only just presenting poster and vanishing away you should see other people's poster as well and 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 find an opportunity to collaborate with them remember research is a team sport it's not a solo sport so the more and more team members active team members you build in the more and more robust your research profile profile will become now the fourth thing i would say volunteering so there is nothing transactional in volunteering right so you can you can go to the free clinic and volunteer there. Uh, you can go to the community health fair you can go for vaccination drive and just show up people will keep noticing you if you show up consistently then then it's a subconscious human mind that hmm i keep seeing this guy and let's let's try to collaborate uh, with that particular um, you know resident or medical student and then you can also join advocacy group that's a big thing so you can join acp advocacy group ama you can if you are into subspecialty subspecialty will have their own advocacy group like aha or acc advocacy meaning um, you are passionate about a specific problem or issue like for example increasing medicare funding or protecting medicaid or protecting research grants that means you are you are you are passionate about that particular issue and if you want to advocate that that means you are reaching out senators and representatives and their staff to help them make decisions uh, especially for healthcare so that's actually protecting physicians as well as patients so that's all about advocacy it's 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 a it's a very important thing to uh, to learn uh, when you are in in career related to healthcare and then that's about it so I, I talked about you know a few very important things first about first was about using social media wisely second was about art of cold emailing third one was about uh, publishing in student or resident section attending state chapter meetings and the fourth one was volunteering so these are some of the way where you can network genuinely and remember networking is not about using people it's not about saying them hey you know i applied at this cycle can you please recommend me to your program no it's not about using them it's about creating the relationships which uplift both of you it uplifts everyone that's the best networking thing you can do and uh, and people can tell where you are truly interested on or, or you just have a superficial interest uh, you don't have to know everyone um, you just need to know right person at the right time and uh, those were I think very important things which I learned I learned them very hard way um, but these are things which really work and i was able to advance my career and i'm still learning these techniques and i'll keep 
keep sharing you my stories on what helped me so these are the things which will eventually help you to get into research position to get into residency and even fellowship thank you for watching this video and if you have any questions please do not forget to um, check out my instagram page and dm me there you can also comment on the youtube video here and uh, if you are preparing for usmle please check out usmlestrike.com website we have usmle step one step two and step three um, courses and we also help um, students who are applying for math cycle we also help in uh, um, editing personal statements cv editing um, as well as interview preparation thanks for watching